This is Todd Stashwick, <laughs> and you are watching Trek Culture. Hello everyone, how are you? Sean Ferry here for Trek Culture, and we are coming at you with the news, because of course all everyone's been talking about for the last few hours is the fact that we have the announcement of new cast and a production of Star Trek Section 31. Yes, this is the long discussed, often changing project that is going to be starring Academy Award winning actress Michelle Yeoh, who will be reprising her role from Star Trek Discovery as Emperor Philippa Giorgio. Now, the news that's come out is that yes, production has begun, and this comes with an awesome image that's been released online of our favourite Emperor, uh, Michelle Yeoh, holding the clapperboard with what we can only assume is the official logo for the project. But put a pin in that, because I'm going to come back to that, but I want to talk about the cast that's been announced. The new characters are being played by Omari Hardwick, Casey Roll, Sam Richardson, Sven Roigrock, Robert Kaczynski, Humberly Gonzalez, and James Hiroyuki Lau. Where have you seen these people before? If you're a fan of the series Power, then you will know Omari Hardwick as his role of James St. Patrick. He is a double Image Awards winner who's also appeared in movies such as The Mother alongside Jennifer Lopez, and he was also recently in Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, but maybe let's not hold that against him. What's even more impressive is the fact that he's not just an actor, but he's also a poet and a musician. He's got an album coming out as well, so he's one of those can do anything people. Casey Roll, I actually remember from Brian Fuller's TV series of Hannibal, which is a deeply unsettling and weird show, and I loved it. Brian Fuller, of course, we will all remember as the initial, 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 initial showrunner of Star Trek Discovery, and I cannot wait for that behind the scenes book to be released. In Hannibal, Roll played Abigail Hobbs. She's also appeared in productions like Red Riding Hood, she was in the reimagined series V, and she's made appearances in The Magicians as well. Veep fans may be delighted to see Sam Richardson making an appearance in Section 31. I know him most recently from his guest turn on Ted Lasso. So I'm interested to see if what what kind of a role he's going to play in Section 31, because and it's just because I've got his comedy chops on my mind. I'm like, Section 31? Okay, no, not really looking for a comedy for Section 31. Do not make this show about the secret police a buddy cop show. Thankfully, Richardson is so multifaceted. He's been in so many things. I think he's, he's honestly one of those actors where it's just like, we need someone who can do literally anything. Let's get Sam Richardson. He was also in the movie Office Christmas Party. And, and I just want to say, it is one of the most stupid movies I've seen in recent years, and I laughed for the, almost the entire film. Sven Roigok might be best known from his appearances in the Spud film series, but he's also appeared in other films such as uh, one of the newer Bring It On movies. I laugh, but like I loved that first one. He was also in Inside Man Most Wanted, but most recently would have been seen in the TV series One Piece, where he played Kabaji. Robert Kaczynski then. Now, some people will go, oh, that's Sucky's love interest from True Blood. Other people will be like, ah, that's the guy from Pacific Rim. Some other people might even be like, wasn't he in Captain Marvel? Me, I remember from EastEnders as Sean Slater, I'm not going to lie to you. Omri Gonzalez would be possibly best known for her voice. She stars in the Star Wars Outlaw series of video games, as well as having appearances in... She's a bit like Sam Richardson, flipping everything, really. She has been in Nobody. She has been in Slumberland. She's been in Orphan Black. She's been in so many different things. And last but not least, I can't wait to see James Hiroyuki Lau. He may be best known for either his roles in The Dropout or Barry. He was in Cowboy Bebop as well as Lost Girls. He's been in an entire slew of other TV productions, as well as the animated film Frankenweenie. This rounds out our new cast members who've been announced, but I put such emphasis on that is because that was included in the press release, these new cast members. Nothing so far has been said or confirmed about Ash Tyler or Shazad Latif. What we don't know is when this story is set. The press release says that it will focus on Emperor Philippa Giorgio tasked with protecting the United Federation of Planets, 
while also having to face the sins of her past. We remember where we left her in Star Trek Discovery's Terraforma Part 2. Thankfully, Carl, I just, I love Carl, was able to send her back closer to her own time so as to certainly, you know, lessen and hopefully undo the effects of that traveling across time and dimensions had done to her. We all remember the curious case of poor Lieutenant Yor. Initially, we may assume that she just gets sent back to the point which she left, which would see her, well, very much able to interact with the Section 31 that was contemporous to what Control took over in Section in Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery. That would mean that there's presumably a massive lull and shift in power. We did see in Such Sweet Sorrow Part 2, which was also directed by Olatunde Osunsanami, who is directing this story, that Ash Tyler is tasked with taking over what remains of Section 31. Are we going to see Ash in this film? Honestly, I'm I'm pretty sure we will. Um, I think there is a wealth of story left to be told there, as well as seeing Ash and Giorgio interact with each other, because they have a... Oh, I don't know if you'd call them friends, but certainly a cordial acquaintance. And quite frankly, we know him. If you want to have another established returning character in this story about Section 31, I think it would make the most sense. There are two possible directions that I, I, I think this show may slash should go in. The first one, the clue we're getting from this is from, if you look at the actual logo that's on the clapperboard that Michelle Yeoh is holding in this, in, in the release, look at the text for section 31. Now, on first glance, I took that as, you know, is this, is this like redacted text? Is that why, it, you know, there's the lines through it? But then, but then I was talking to Chris and we had this quite frankly horrible idea that what happens if traveling back in time doesn't actually successfully undo what happened to her by traveling into the future. That she still is, in fact, affected by this dimensional displacement. And then we got to thinking that, now, unless the people writing the contracts for Star Trek Discovery back in the day seriously knew what they were doing, there is a strong, I suppose a strong feeling that I have is that this may be a one and done. You know, and that even if it is successful, well, we may go with the other cast that are being introduced in this. Academy Award winning actress, not the easiest person to keep getting back every year for a sequel. What happens if we don't undo the effects of this displacement? And in fact, Giorgio doesn't make it. Now, that's a bit of a downer way of looking at it, I know. And I, I don't mean it to send that way at all, because I don't want to write the character off before we've even seen the long track. The more we think on it, the more it actually makes sense that perhaps, no, the jaunt through time wasn't the magical cure-all that we thought it was. Perhaps then part of the plot of this long track is finding a cure. And if that's the case, does that mean that we can just do all the interdimensional travel we want. <coughs> Tie it into the Kelvin verse. Uh, oh, who said that? Who, did, you, did you say that? You, I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. But there you go. I'm, I'm kind of coming up with this on the spot. All of this wild speculation. I mean, we're, I'm literally getting this from font. Okay? So this could be nothing. Uh, and sorry if I've just pitched a really good idea and it doesn't end up being that. Uh, but, you know, listen, Fireman, you want to you you come to me. I, I have your people talk to my people. The other thing... That, that I think this story as a Section 31 story should focus on is the Section 31 of Star Trek Discovery is effectively a secret army. I mean, we've seen they have star bases, they have ships, they have more resources than you could ever hope to imagine. And quite frankly, that isn't the Section 31 we were introduced to back in Deep Space Nine. That in Deep Space Nine, which of course is over a hundred years later in chronologically, you see someone who is the shadowy secret police, that yes, they have these te this technology and these resources, but what they don't have is a fleet that's gonna turn up at your door. Is this story going to be a way of bridging the gap between these two variations of Section 31? Which actually I'm very on board with, because that's not a retcon, what you have is two versions of the same organization in incredibly different time periods. 
how does one become the other? And expanding the story somewhat to include other Section 31 agents, but in a way that Discovery, which was quite busy dealing with the stuff Discovery was dealing with, didn't have time to do. I would like to see that version of the story. So it, to sort of summarise, we have this announcement of this new, underline new, cast of characters that are being introduced. We have no word whatsoever on Shazad Latif's involvement or lack thereof with the Section 31 movie. The logo that was revealed, which of course may itself not be the final logo and won't this have aged well, but the logo suggests that there's something going on. There's that glitching style. So does that mean secretive, redacted, whatever? Or does that mean that no glitching as in George O was glitching. Hopefully that stops, right? And then last but not least, what version of Section 31 are we going to see? Because uh, again, as I think of it, we don't know what year this is going to be set in. We all assume she's going back to the 23rd century, but we don't know that. What do you think any of this means? Let us know in the comments below. Join us in wild speculation. We love a bit of speculation. It's good fun. It's kind of half of our lists, really. But do let us know. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And please make sure that, you know, interact with us over on social media as well, um, because it's half the fun, you know. You're awesome. You're wonderful. We are at Trek Culture on Twitter, on Blue Sky and TikTok. We are at Trek Culture YT on Instagram, so you can catch us on any of those. I'm at Sean Ferrick on the various socials. You can at Edit Chris Edit as well on the various socials. Live long and prosper until I see you again. Look after yourself. Look after your nearest and dearest. Stay positive. Stay upbeat. And, you know, don't give us a reason to send Section 31 after you. And I guess no one will knock on your door.